thank you so much for joining us here at Super Investor. How will private equity fare in this high inflation, high interest rate environment and what do they need to do to navigate that environment? Yeah, indeed. I mean, I think we're, we're in interesting times with, with higher rates. It means uh, financing is more expensive, but also there's a lot less liquidity um, in, in the markets. I, I think it's going to be a lot more challenging for, private, for the traditional buyout model to uh, find businesses that they can that generate enough cash flow to cover the higher, in, higher, higher interest costs and also generate um, the returns that, that we're used to in the private equity industry. So they're going to have to find um, higher growing businesses or more value, more uh, earnings uh, improvement that they can generate in those businesses to generate the same returns that they have over the past five years. I mean, that's kind of basic, basic arithmetic that, that that's going to have to happen. Um, and so, uh, you know, we are looking at you know, the, the highest quality managers, what they've done in similar environments in the past to try to, to find places we can, we can replicate that. But it's definitely a case of, of thinking very hard about our, our buyout allocation at the moment. You touched on it there. Presumably you are looking and very focused on those relationships with the GPs at this point as well. Mm -hmm. What do they need to be doing in this environment and how do they need to be operating with you and collaborating with you? Yeah, I think, I mean, we're coming out of an environment when, when fundraising was frankly quite easy and there was a lot of new entrants um, to the space and there was a lot of uh, returns being generated by, by uh, private equity. So it was self-funding to a great extent. Um, and now that has slowed down, if not stopped, um, or reversed even in some cases. And so, um, you know, the, 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 the GP who comes to market with the expectation that um, all of their loyal uh, LPs will just step up and fund them, uh, you know, need to realize that you know, we, we are working for, for, for a client or m multiple clients that have um, liquidity constraints. And um, you know, they're, they're, they're invest we're investing in private equity for a reason for, for, to pay our pensions in our case. Um, and you know, the shape of those liabilities, et cetera, is changing in this environment and what we, you know, what we need to do. So, and, and just bringing that partnership approach to the relationship is, is, is critical. Um, you know, being open and transparent about what's going on in the portfolio, but also you know, open and understanding of, of the circumstances of, of the LPs. Uh, you know, it, 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 building a strong relationship and being, being that openness, we found, drives good performance as well. Do you expect to see sort of structural changes as well? Because obviously, You've talked about not having the same expectation and levels of returns, and, and, and what sort of deals are you expecting to be seen to be happening in this sort of environment? Yeah, well, I, I mean, as I said, I think GPs will have to, you know, hunt harder to find businesses that can generate returns with you know, higher interest costs, frankly. Um, and but also, I think you know, we need to think about the LP GP relationship. Um, the rest of the asset management industry has um, you know, become more efficient. Uh, fees have come down in almost every other asset class except private equity. And you know, in this environment where there's going to be less demand for private equity, um, and there's a lot of, you know, there's more, many more GPs than there once was, um, you know, the, the supply demand pendulum is swinging back. And you know, I think you will see, in order to get the same or similar net returns, you are going to have to see some compression in the fee load uh, overall. So I think that you know, the the in in the first phase of private equity, bigger funds tended to have lower fees, um, and in and you know that was kind of in the in the naughty uh, the early two thousands. You saw uh, you know, bigger funds with lower fees. It's definitely you know LPs pushing back in the GFC. LPs um, clawed back uh, the fees on uh, transaction fees. Um, you know, got rebated to LPs. It was a big change that came out of the GFC. And now in this cycle, we're likely to see you know some other um, some other benefits to LPs. I think coming back. You know what what shape that takes is is yet to be seen. But we definitely will be will certainly be lobbying for for um, you know a bit of a pendulum swing. Do you think that 
LPs will be looking at their traditional relationships, their established relationships, and looking for those GPs to perhaps be more diversified rather than having a larger pool of managers. So they're going to be you know, looking to a core that do more rather than more people that, that do that. I, I definitely think that's that's been an industry trend for a while. Both, um, you know, GPs with multiple platforms or sorry, multi multiple products on the same platform, um, and but also you know investing in generalists. I, you know, there, there is a challenge of uh, specialized theme funds that they tend to you know they'll be they could be good for a while, but then that theme runs dry, and yet the fund continues to invest. Um, and so by being narrow, you you, you know you. We reduce the degrees of freedom, and you know the best managers who have robust uh, investment committees and a clear investment philosophy, a clear implementation uh, process. You know can navigate multiple um, investment strategies successfully, and so I, I definitely think there's been a trend to invest in more generalists. Um, but at the same time, you know. Nobody wants to give people blank checks uh, and, you know, kind of the discretionary global macro hedge fund is a thing of the past. Um, and I don't think that's a thing for private equity either. But it's, um, you know, having having people who have a very clear investment philosophy and approach to buying private companies um, and they can move between the sectors if they have the right approach and you know, philosophy. Because it's something that came up on your panel. Um what about ESG? How important is that when you're looking at your GPs? And are we not just paying lip service in this industry anymore, but actually quite sort of focused on this area? Well, I think, I mean, you know, we firmly believe that private ownership is a, a, a very strong form of ownership, if not superior form of ownership, and that, you know, the shareholders are at the in the boardroom and they can drive the agenda. And so for ESG, that means um, you know, private equity can make transformations on ESG themes as well. And I think you know, GPs have been um, you know, diligencing ESG issues if they went to value since the beginning of the, of the asset class. Um, uh, you know, now it's become much more explicit and structured and now it's becoming the next phase is being reported on. Um, and I think that's that's really the, the, the new innovation is it's being tracked and, and 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 much more systematic and it can't be ignored. So I think in the past it could occasionally you know be ignored uh, in the name of returns, whereas now it is much more um, you know it's much more systematic and it and it is it, it's more than lip service today to, to your question. It is it is very much a condition of investing. These things need to be you know, monitored, managed and reported on is, is the future. The Super Investor is focused on the LPGP relationship. It's the largest event in the world doing that. There's 1,300 people from your industry here. You're going to have a lot of conversations this week. What would you hope somebody would take away from a chat with you this week? What would be a key message? Yeah, I think you know the, the main takeaway will probably be the obvious that it will be a, a more challenging fundraising environment going forward. But you know, I like them to also take away that you know the, the industry, the private equity industry, has a prosperous future ahead. Um, but it will require a bit more give and take with LPs um, and probably some you know concessions on the GP side to allow us to, to, to fund the asset class for the future. Jeffrey, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Good to talk to you. Pleasure. Thank you.